In this video, we're going to compare the new Five Nights at Freddy's movie based on the hit video game franchise with Willy's Wonderland, the cult classic 2021 film that was inspired by the Five Nights phenomenon. You mean ripped off Five Nights at Freddy's? And we're going to decide which of these films is the superior horror movie featuring homicidal animatronics terrorizing an abandoned family-themed restaurant. Obviously, Obviously it's, it's Five Willy's Nights Wonderland. at Freddy's. You're joking. No? Were you recently hit in the head or something? What's wrong with Willy's Wonderland? It's a bad movie! Willy's takes a concept that should be creepy and just makes it idiotic. It tries to be a horror movie, a comedy, and an action movie, and fails at all three. At least Five Nights understands how to be a horror movie. A PG-13 horror movie that doesn't show most of the kills. At least Willy's shows blood and you actually get to see the person get ripped in half. Five Nights at Freddy's is going for scary, not gory. It's about suspense and creepiness. It sets up scenes with real stakes. There's a real sense of danger. Oh, get over yourself. This isn't The Shining. It's a movie about creepy pizza robots coming to life and killing people. At least Willy's Wonderland knows what kind of movie it's supposed to be and has fun with the concept. Fun? It's just round after round of the janitor killing each animatronic creature off with barely any struggle. There's no suspense, there's no tension, because it's clear by the second fight scene that he's going to win all of these fights without breaking a sweat. It's like watching a top-tier gamer play a game they've beaten a hundred times on the easiest difficulty setting. I mean, what's the point? It's just so repetitive. Oh, you want to talk repetitive? How many times do we need to see Mike's dumb dream sequence where his brother was taken? I watched FNAF to see animatronics being all murdery, not to see some dude chat in the woods with a bunch of ghost kids over and over again. Uh, yeah, okay. They were establishing character. Story. The whole theme of the movie was tied into those scenes. I didn't ask for any of that. I just wanted to see creepy animatronics eating people. Oh, you want to talk about the animatronics? Yeah, let's talk about the animatronics. FNAF actually used real animatronics for most of the shots of Freddy and his pals in the movie. Their movements, their mannerisms, all felt legit because they were legit. The creatures in Willy's always just felt like a person in a suit, or a puppet, or in the case of Siren, just some woman wearing a mascot head. I never once bought into the idea that these were animatronics come to life, no matter how many whirring servo sound effects they added in post. Okay, but does it really matter? Yeah! because Nick Cage beating up cosplayers and puppets is considerably less badass than Nick Cage beating up giant robots. I could beat up a puppet. That's debatable. Okay, you stay out of this. My point is that the animatronics in these movies should be creepy and scary. And if they're not creepy and scary, what's the point? Okay, creepy and scary. Like the scene in FNAF where Freddy and his friends help a little girl build a fort. Okay, listen. And then they all get into the fort and lay in a cute circle on the floor. So scary. I was pissing my pants with fear. They were trying to gain her trust so they could shove her into an animatronic body. Making them unthreatening for a majority of the movie just kind of dilutes their creepy factor. At least Willie's gang are a threat throughout the whole movie. Oh yeah, so threatening that they just stand around and watch the janitor pick off their buddies one at a time for no good reason. Like, why don't they just surround Cage and finish him off together? Why are they taking turns? It's stupid. Well, if they did that, there wouldn't be a movie. If the entire premise of your movie requires stupidity to work, then I'm sorry, your movie sucks. Okay, fine. Let's talk about the cast. One movie has the guy from Hunger Games, and the other has... Academy Award winner Nicholas freaking Cage, who is absolutely squandered. What the hell are you talking about? Nick Cage kicks ass in this movie. Nick Cage's whole deal, the whole reason he's always so talked about, so memed, is that he always goes so over the top bonkers with his performances. He's so good at it. Pissed blood! A-hole. That sort of manic energy would have absolutely killed in a movie like this. Think of... Ash Williams in Evil Dead 2, he's stuck in that cabin fighting off deadite after deadite, and over the course of the film, he just loses his damn mind. <laughs> That's what I wanted in this movie. I wanted that Nicolas Cage. I wanted 
batshit crazy Nick Cage. That's all you have to do! Do you understand? But instead, we get a stoic Nick Cage who doesn't show any emotion, doesn't have any lines. Yeah, that's what's hilarious about it, that he doesn't say anything. Okay, it was funny for about five minutes. After that, I was begging for... Nick. And it's not that Cage is doing a bad job with the role. It's that the role is only allowing him to utilize 5% of his immense talents. Maybe so, but let's be real, Nick Cage at 5% is still better than Josh Hutchinson at 100. Hutcherson. What? It's Josh Hutcherson, not Hutchinson? <sighs> Does anyone care? His only claim to fame was the Hunger Games series, and let's face it, that franchise peaked with the first movie, which itself was just a watered-down version of Battle Royale. Future Man was pretty good. Season 1, maybe. Okay, fine. Putting aside their past work, Josh does great in Five Nights at Freddy's. Unlike the janitor and Willies, Mike in Freddy's is an actual character who has a range of emotions. He's caring, angry, worried, terrified. The janitor kills a robotic gorilla with a plunger, chugs energy drinks, and plays pinball. Is that not range? Okay, that's not a character, though. It's a barely funny meme that they replay to death. I went into FNAF expecting Mike to be a generic character, but I like that he has an entire backstory that ties into the main story in a meaningful way. Okay, fine. The janitor isn't especially deep, but that's what the other characters in the movie are for. Like Liv, whose parents were killed in front of her when she was a child, and now she's a teenager being raised by the woman who was directly responsible for her parents' death. That's what's so frustrating about Willy's Wonderland. They had all the pieces to make something good, and they were so close, but they botched the execution. Well, a lot of people would disagree. Yeah, but a lot of people are stupid. Hey! I'm sorry, but if you watch these movies back to back and don't realize that Willy's Wonderland is the Wish.com version of Five Nights at Freddy's, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I can acknowledge that Willy's lacks the polish of the FNAF movie. Well, that's an understatement. Okay, take for example the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria set. It's amazing. It feels like a real place with real history. There's so many amazing details in the set design. In comparison, Willy's Wonderland, the restaurant, is underwhelming. It didn't feel like a believable place. It just felt cheap and small. Well, obviously, FNAF had a $25 million budget. Willie's had $5 million. I would expect FNAF's set design to look somewhat better with five times the budget. Somewhat better? Willie's is a $5 million movie that looks like a $500,000 movie. All the budget went to hiring Nick Cage. Worth every penny. Okay, look, we are never going to come to an agreement here. Tyracula, you're going to have to be the tiebreaker. I thought both of them sucked. Well, okay then. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of these split personality reviews, let me know down in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on whatever comes next. Here's some other stuff to check out. And until next time, later, later Danger Seekers. Seekers.